opening statement. <laughs> he said it. His is realized, mine is at best theoretical. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prachari Me Nirvishesha Sunyavari Paschatya Desatarne Pancha Kalpa Thiruvishya Kripa Sindhu Vebacha Paditanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Rindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I'll just start off with a personal story. Somehow or other, women come up to me and ask me, can you give me a husband? It happens all the time. I, I, was, I was walking in the... Uh, what was it? Got a building in Mayapur. The big one. It's coming down the stairs. One lady, she came up to me and said, uh, I don't know what she said. She was speaking a language I couldn't understand, but she was very emotional. Extremely emotional. So I stood, and was out of respect for her enthusiasm, I stood there and listened. Then I realized I had to find out what she was saying. So I saw a young man walking along and I pulled him aside and I said, what is, she, what is she saying? He said, well, she's speaking Marathi and I don't understand Marathi. <laughs> so he stood by and he, then I, I flagged down another gentleman, another young man, and I said, do you understand Marathi? He said, yes. And I said, what is she saying? She has a daughter and she wants you to find a husband for her. I don't know the lady. I never saw her before. She just came up to me and she started. So there I was and I was thinking, I have to do something. <laughs> so I just turned to one of the boys and I stopped and I, I said, here he is. <laughs> and I left immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Not to see what was going to happen afterwards. <laughs> and sometimes we say happy ever after, but I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> so, anyway, when Srila Prabhupada would always say, Sarve Suketu Bhavanti. Uh, let everyone become happy. It's a joyous occasion. And two souls come together to assist each other in becoming Krishna conscious. It's a, a joyous occasion. And it can be the best of any situation or it could be a difficult situation. And what will make the difference? I think Mahatma gave some very practical and very subtle, very important aspects in terms of relationship and that's the foundation of how to deal in that relationship which will make that relationship grow and of course as he said appreciation is this is the, the topmost sometimes people come to me with marriageable problems and I say do you remember what it was like when you first met your wife and you got married I say go back to that mindset <laughs> and try to remember how nice it was at that time and start to reflect on those that mood that was there at that time and try to bring it back to the present situation and you'll see it kind of mitigates the problem that apparently has come so yeah time has a tendency to uh, as you say familiarity breeds indifference <laughs> we get a little bit what we say routine with each other but as Vaishnavas, we also know that giving respects to others and uh, 
serving others is the principle of the culture of Vaishnavism. It's not just about Krishna, it's about each other. In fact, in order for it to be about Krishna, it has to be about each other. <laughs> Otherwise, Krishna is not really in the picture. And so that relationship is uh, can have a a wonderful effect in bringing us to the goal of life, which is ultimately to develop our love for Krishna. But in that, in that struggle to serve and to practice one's Krishna consciousness, there's a very important principle, and that is keeping Krishna in the center. <laughs> there was one book that was written in relationship to marriage, it's called The Third Partner. <laughs> and that is Krishna, <laughs> the one who is the person who we center our activities around what pleases Krishna or what is that religious principle that's the foundation for the duty I have in relationship to my wife or into the activities that I am to pl play in the role as a husband or in the role as a wife. Um, and one of the ways to keep the respect is, is how we address each other in terms of words. In the Vedic culture, which is the, the culture of refinement, they, uh, they use a very, one might say, sweet way to uh, address each other. A husband calls the wife Devi. <laughs> which means goddess. <laughs> and the wife refers to the husband as Prabhu, or my uh, worshipful master, <laughs> my master, like that. That helps us. We might think, well, it doesn't really, it does matter <laughs> how we interact with each other in terms of how we, we, we address each other. Because as Mahatma said, and it's, he mentioned, he really, hit on a very, what you say, important point is that as time goes on, things can get more or less routine or ordinary or just uh, sometimes uh, become a little indifferent to the relationship. But it's important because the whole principle of life is relationship and ultimately our relationship is with Krishna. But in that relationship with Krishna, our relationships with each other have to be also based on the quality of that mood of service. So if we see ourselves as servant, then we don't have any problem. If we see ourselves as master, there was one story that I heard from His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, where he, husband and wife, we were fighting, arguing, and they came to him. And uh, he was listening to their, their arguments. And then basically he just couldn't really deal with the, the problem. So he said, but you should try to understand. He said to the wife, you are the servant of your husband. And you, he said to the husband, you should also see your wife as you, you, as you are her servant also. So from both sides. So after some time they left and went back home and start arguing again. And the wife was saying, did you hear Maharaj? He said, you're my servant. No, no, you, you didn't hear me. You know, he said, you're my servant. <laughs> so they got it backwards. <laughs> but we are servant, but we are servant to, in order, and we, as we serve, in, we should know what is that relationship in terms of what is our duty to each other. Uh, Prabhupada said, if you want to keep the wife happy, mm -hmm. of course I'm talking from, you know, I'm just repeating. <laughs> A hot mic can talk from realization, I can only talk from what I hear. Prabhupada said, you have to give your wife nice clothes, nice jewelry and nice food. Right. Huh? And, and children. And, and children, yes. 
Nice. Uh, I could tell you a few hundred other things, but <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time now. Well, it's not like it's just once a year. <laughs> once in a while. So if you multiply the things by the number of days, it becomes quite numerous. And the wife should try to learn what what is about her husband that she can do in order to serve him nicely. The wife studies the husband and understands how to please him. She doesn't argue with him, but she gets him to do what she wants him to do without arguing. That's a very, very, very subtle point that only women know, I heard about it. <laughs> Because if a wife tells a husband what to do, it ruins the marriage fast. But she has to know how to do it without doing, without telling it. That's that's the that's the program. Yeah. Now one uh, very senior god sister of mine. She was not god sister actually. She, she's not my god sister, but she's a very senior devotee in our society. She said, "I ruined my husband. My." my marriage because I was always telling my husband what to do and he would tell me you know because you're telling me what to do I can't do it <laughs> that's the male ego <laughs> that's the male ego the man, the, the man does not, doesn't like his wife telling him what to do but she should also know how to get things done by not knowing how to tell him what to do, by knowing how to tell him what to do, by not telling him what to do. And that's a science that only women can know how to do. Maybe you can explain that deep. Honey, you're so amazing. You're so strong. You're so intelligent, powerful, creative. You are just amazing. I just... I can't say enough about you. And you know there's a pile of dishes in the sink? You see them? And I know, because you're so amazing, you can clean those dishes like nobody else. And you know how much you like the house to be clean, so... <laughs> you are so resourceful, and I'm looking for some resources. <laughs> So yeah, these are some of the subtle points, but ultimately it's keeping Krishna in the center. And Srila Prabhupada in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, in the 13th chapter, he speaks about the, well, Krishna speaks about the 20 items of knowledge. And then one there's about uh, the relationship between husband and wife, and what are the duties between in that relationship? And Prabhupada said, you should do four things. You should chant Hare Krishna together. You should read Krishna book together. He said Krishna book. Of course, we can read any scripture together. You should worship the deity together, and you should take prasadam together. <laughs> So these are the four things Prabhupada mentions. It's in the report. Which helps to really understand what is our relationship beyond just the duties of household life. And that is that we are there, we're there with each other to help each other become Krishna conscious. And as they always say, a family that prays together stays together. And so it's nice. And I've seen, I've also been talking just recently, one, one, one man said, I just started a program with my wife. We started to read together. It wasn't happening before. And he said, all of a sudden, now I'm starting to appreciate her association more now. So, yeah, so it, it's like that. Uh, and that's what brings devotees together is Krishna. And that's what keeps devotees together, Krishna. We keep Krishna in the center. Then, the, even though there is, uh, you know, Govardhan Puja, yeah. or Indra throwing his thunderbolts, 
And, but Krishna lifted the Govardhan hill and gave everyone shelter under the hill. So there will be rainstorms, sometimes there's some thunderbolts, and sometimes they keep coming. But don't worry about that. Just, keep, just take shelter of the Lord. And remember that whatever you, as I think Mahatma said it so nicely, that even if something is not agreeable, it's not so important. Prabhupada would also say, sometimes a husband and wife will get into an argument, but it's like two kittens fighting, that's all. It's not really, nobody takes it seriously. So even if there's some disagreement and some argument, ultimately, the lo when, if the love is there and the appreciation is there, then all these things will, pa will pass in due course of time. So I wish you both, both couples, some just getting to know the other couple. Um, the best, um, stay together, chant Hare Krishna together and worship the Lord together and uh, develop your relationship with each other in Krishna consciousness. Very simple, and but very a most important thing we can do because everything is based on relationship. Happiness depends on relationship. Misery falls, comes when, when relationships are not there or they're not good. So it's something you have to work on every day, every minute. It's not something you just do and then it just happens. Well, I'm, now I'm married and we just become routine. No. It's something you always have to be aware of. The needs and the responsibilities you have to each other. And a husband should also make friends with other men and the wife should also make friends with other ladies. If they depend on each other for everything, the relationship will grow weak. So you get your strength also from your friends and that helps to build your relationship with each other also. Because sometimes it, if you depend too much on each other for everything you need, it could put it could put pressure on that relationship and find it very difficult. So that's why we also have to have friends outside to fulfill our needs in a more complete and roundabout way. Thank you, Hare Krishna. <laughs>